Okay, let me go ahead and sign in to the LRS here. Once you've got an account and signed up, um, you may already have an LRS, but just in case you don't, we're gonna go through the steps to create an LRS. And we're gonna call this one Computer Science uh, 101. And we're gonna leave the default options checked and click Create. Now that we have the LRS instance set up, we're gonna go in and show you how to look at the XAPI data. Now this LRS instance is empty. So what we want to do first is uh, create a data set that we can look at. This is a really useful feature for content developers uh, that are creating content but haven't yet instrumented their content to send XAPI statements. And they want to go and look at some sample data sets in the LRS. So we're going to do that. Uh, but first we need to create an access key. So let's go ahead and set that up. This is a requirement when you set up an LRS anytime, that's how you send data to the LRS is using this access key. So we're just gonna do a CS101. Leave the default options checked and hit create. And I'm gonna to go to the statement viewer. We go to XAPI data and then statements. You can see that we don't have any statements yet. You'll see this message when the database is empty. So what we want to do is um, go back to the home page of where the LRS instance and after you've got your access key created you see that you have a um, one user account to access the LRS and right below that you've got a button here that says generate statements so we're gonna go ahead and click that button and this is gonna create a simulated set of XAPI statements for your LRS for you to start looking at as you can see it generated 2208 statements 30 different agents and 343 different activities uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in there and take a look at these statements. By default, we have uh, an, the actor, the verb, and the object are the key parts that you can filter on. You can also expand each statement and look at it as the raw JSON in its raw JSON form. So we got actor, uh, verb, we got Vanny Rosamond, and all of these actor names are auto-generated. They're not real people, of course. Uh, we've got verb terminated and the course or activity is a Python course, uh, Coursera Python course. It's called Programming for Everybody. And you can see in the context here that we have some grouping and parent relationships and we're using the SCORM profile for this uh, particular statement. Let's take a look at some of the other things you can do from the statement viewer besides filtering on the agent cursor over the icon here click filter this agent it will show me all the statements for just that one actor okay and then i can clear the filter just like that you can do the same thing with terminated if you wanted to see all statements that were terminated and then you can clear that filter as well you can also click on this filter to filter on the object and that will show every type of statement related to the programming for everybody activity. You also have additional options here for the date, setting the date range. If you want to look at it at all time or a specific month or a specific date, you can do that. We'll just leave the all time as the default here. You can also set up some really great filters. So as you know, the XAPI statement data model includes a lot more than just the actor, verb, and object, and maybe the, the date that's stored. We can enable a lot of other fields here. Assuming that the statement uh, has, has stored these fields, authority, of course, is stored by the LRS, but let's turn on success, completed, and score, and response. In addition, you have some other rendering options here. You can in, render the raw IDs, uh, you can render full text search and canonical display and also show show voided statements. Um, let's click on full text search. What full text search is going to do for us is it's going to give us the ability to type in the name of the course and not have to know the actual ID of the activity. Let's say we wanted to find out this programming for everybody course. Let's just search on programming. And let's expand this column a little bit so we can see a little better. As you see, it returned at all activities with the term programming in it. We even have our programming here. We go down to the next page of results. 
uh, more more with programming for everybody getting started with Python so we can find out those are the two activities that have the word programming in it. like I said if you don't uh, have this full text search on you have to actually know the identifier for that specific activity which you can get here and you can filter on it that way as well but it's a lot easier with a full text search so let's go back here and remove that filter okay and as you can see we've got all these fields now available for us to filter on you have uh, success uh, also score if a score is associated you see that over here in this column this is really handy for digging into statements and trying to mine and find the things you want okay let's try using the text full text search terminated and we'll see we've got lots of terminated statements here that uh, come up and if you want to go and look at a count of these by activity you click over here in this object column then we get a count here. As you can see, this canonical activity table is opened up and it lists all the activities that LRS has encountered. So this gives you the number of attempts for that particular unique activity ID. So that's good for you know searching on which things were the most terminated, how many times they were terminated. Uh, you can also use that to figure out the spread of responses uh, to a question, uh, for example. So let's find a data set now uh, with the responded verb. So, for example, you can see Goldina Marie responded to that question once. Berlina responded three times. And June Hermina has several. Um, so you can kind of get a spread over responses to a question. Let's imagine you want to look at every assessment question that, or every assessment that has a score higher than 75. Um, let's clear the responded verb and let's go in here what we're going to do for uh, adding this is under additional filters you're going to choose a path and we know that score is stored in the result uh, score and we're going to put scaled and the result scored at scaled property and we want to say is equal to or greater than point seven five we add that filter and as you see in the statement viewer, we're going to get all, this, all the statements that have a score of greater than 75. Now we need to show that field. So we're going to go back over here and up here under custom fields. This is adding an additional column in the statement viewer. So we'll go to result, dot score, dot scaled, add field. And there it is. You see it's showing up over here. That's just an example of some of the few things you can do with additional filters uh, inside of the statement viewer. As you can see, it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, you can also save this out as a report. So as you build out uh, different types of filters and queries, you could save those and you reuse them later on. So as you can see, there's uh, a lot of powerful capabilities in here. You, you can pretty much filter over any parts of the entire XAPI statement model. Okay, I'm going to delete that report. Let's try something else. Let's try filtering on object definition type. And as you see from the drop down, we have two different types here from this data set lesson interaction. Of course, if your data set was storing more other types of activities, uh, they would show up here in the drop down. So it's really intuitive here about the statement viewer is it automatically knows what those types are and provides an option for you in its drop down list so you can select them you don't have to like think about it or guess it knows what data is in the data set so let's say let's select a lesson and add that filter and we're going to see everything that is in a lesson and let's uh, show that field here into the statement viewer um, type that field and if I scroll over here you can see this column is showing everything that's a lesson okay so that's the statement viewer in addition you can also view data about agents activities activity state 
activity profile, agent profile, attachments, and logs if that data is sent. So in addition to just, you know, the core XAPI statement data model, you can look at the other pieces as well. Another tool in the tool set, let's say you're looking at a statement and, you know, sometimes it's kind of difficult to look at the context uh, activities, uh, the JSON data ver related to that. And as you can see, this particular course, uh, Programming for Everybody, has a parent relationship to a course, uh, a larger course called Learn to Program and Analyze Data with Python. But if we go, go up here and look at the Activity Explorer, this shows you all of that, the activities with uh, parent and children relationships. Um, learn to par learning to program and analyze data with Python. Uh, that's the parent course we were just looking at. And then programming for everybody is the um, lesson associated with that course. So you can actually click on that and it'll show you completions, attempts, and um, other data. You can click and drill down here and it'll actually pull up those statements for you as well. So it's another great tool uh, for looking at your data that if it does have those types of relationships in it before digging into the statement viewer. So if you don't want to use the statement viewer, you can use the activity explorer to drill down and find those statements too, as long as there's a, a parent child relationship. And also from the activity explorer, you could also look at analytics. There's a link here as well if you wanted to go and see what some of those dashboards look like for that activity. Okay, that about wraps it up here for the uh, tutorial on the XAPI Statement Viewer. As always, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at lrs.io or veracity.it. And don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons if you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more videos in the future from Veracity Learning.